part of what was great about Derry was that it wasn't our gig. So two things, it wasn't our fault. And we were, we were like everybody else. We were guests at a life that was no longer ours. And it was kind of, it was interesting to see what we had been without actually being it. For the first time in my life, I got to go to a horselips gig, which is a fantastic thing to be able to do. And now we have pretty much come to the end of our journey. I think you'd admit that as journeys go, it's had a bit of everything. We've witnessed the birth of a uniquely Irish form of music and the band that made it. We've been privy to moments of great success, bitter disappointment, betrayals, rows, breakups, reunions. Our story was about five guys who set out to play some music and have a good time, and who along the way showed us a thing or two about ourselves. They reached deep inside and pulled out something we'd almost forgotten about, and then they gave it back. In the words of Declan Lynch, they took the constituent parts of what it meant to be Irish and they put them back together in a way that wasn't crap. I think they were disgracefully kind of underestimated. I think that, I think what partly the, the problem was that they got lumped into this Irish folk music thing. Even if, even if you look for them now, you will find them in Virgin and Tower categorised as an Irish, in the Irish folk tradition, which they're not, they're a sui generis kind of band. They belong in a complete place that's totally and utterly their own, you know? Um, they're mythic and they're, they're comic and they're all sorts of, I think that it's absolutely time for a reclamation of that band. Rock and roll is a really good way of showing what happens to culture, how it can actually resuscitate itself, how it can actually um, get trapped in a certain idiom and repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, you know, how you can become an, infatuated by your own self-image, you know, and think, this is me now, I'm finally arrived at myself, let's, I'll sing, I'll stay like this. Well, if you do that, you're dead, you know? And there's all these things in the, in the horse of story that I find amazing, you know, and, and uh, uh, I'm glad they're back for that reason, because I think the story isn't finished. I think, that, you, know, that there's, you know, they're not just something that happened way back there in, in history 30 years ago. Um, they're, they're still a living, unresolved element of our cultural development. All of which is fine and true, but there's something else as well. Music is evocative. Music paints pictures, drags you back, brings you right to the place and the time where you heard it first, met first, loved first, lost first. For most, music becomes part of the soundtrack of their lives, but for a few, it can be more. For a few, music can become a part of them, change them, forever. Do I miss it? Yeah, I do. It was, it was, it was a good time. It was, simply, it was before I was married, before I had relationships, before any of that. And it, 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 was, it was my version of a, a, a Jack Kerouac novel. It really was. If you know where I came from, I came from like a, a, a rural town in Mayo, and it was it was there couldn't be anything far, as far removed from what I ended up doing from where I came from, and from my whole background as well. God knows how it got into my system or, or what brought it on, but it, it happened, and it's, it's remained a part of my life for 27 years. This is to go with it, is it? No, no, no. no we know. <laughs> <laughs> For 10 years, Horselips ploughed their very unique musical furrow from their home base in Ireland into mainland Europe and on into America. In an eight year period from 1972 to their last show in 1980, when Charles O'Connor's fiddle spun hypnotically through the spotlights in the King's Hall, they'd produced a staggering 12 albums and performed live over 2,000 times. In the 10 years that Horselips existed as a real live band, they took on the world on our behalf, and while they maybe never conquered it, they certainly gave it a good hard shake, and we love them for it. I'm still in love with them. Still in love with them. I listen to them all the time. Um, I don't know if I'd be in any position to go hitching all over Ireland now if they were. Uh, no, I'd probably go in my Gucci shoes now, wouldn't I? But. Uh, no, I'm still in love with them. I mean, it's your first love with the musicians. I mean, like anything, it's your first love never. It's always special and always will be. And if that's sentimental, so be it. We were wise, oh so wise, not given to lies.
So what was it all about, this saga of four friends who started out as a band miming in a long-lost lager commercial, who stole a guitar player from Limerick and became five, who drove the highways and byways all dressed up in green velour with their lights and their smoke machines and their electric fiddles, giving us a glimpse at a future where better things were possible and helping us believe that this better future was for us. But wait a minute. First, last and always, this was about music. They changed our world because they rocked it. We took off our shirts, we danced in strange formations and we air guitared along because we loved the music, despite the lines of experts queuing up to tell us why we shouldn't. So maybe the question is, where do they stand in that world? Were they the start of something or the end of something? And how good were they, really? Melody Maker described them as a cross between Led Zeppelin and the Chieftains. And you couldn't say that about any other band. <laughs> it's hard to know where Horselips fit in, but I think it's equally hard to position any Irish band in, in, in a kind of a line or a lineage. I mean, where did Thin Lizzy come out of? You know, where did Van come out of? I mean, later bands like U2 could, could draw a line back to Horselips. Uh, that's that's for sure. Um, you know, if only in terms of inspiration, in terms of showing what can be done, and showing that it can be done on your own terms, as an Irish band in Ireland, operating from Ireland. I think the Geldof stuff, the Pogue stuff, the U2 stuff and all the rest of it would probably have happened without Horselips. I don't really think Horselips needed to open those doors for these people at all. But does that necessarily take away from a chapter in the history of Irish rock? In fact, in one way, it almost adds to it. They don't need to stand with all these connections and with all this linear thing of, oh, if there wasn't a Horselips, that's nonsense. There's just great music. That's really all it is. The music really was good. They were a great, they were great live. Really fiery. When, when, when Charles was doing his violin, I mean, with the hair running around the stage like a fucking mad dervish doing his thing, I mean, it was brilliant. Was he playing it well? I don't know. It sounded good to me. It's all part of the parcel. It was brilliant. It was fantastic. Horse lips were great. Are, are they needed for the big line of Irish music from Sean Arena to you two? Oh, get lost. I don't care. We've gone sideways to the sun. They were a great band in the sense that they invented something. That's my definition of a great man. Being great at somebody else's shit never made you great, even if you're better at it than the people who invented it.